2020, the year that changed us all, a whirlwind. The year had barely taken off before this virus began to invade and infect the planet. We became obsessed with daily press conferences about the exponential growth of cases, then quarantine. Remember when we thought that was going to last about two weeks? <laughs> then came isolation, grief, stillness, being with yourself. And just when we were almost comfortable being with ourselves, bam, what happened? A black man took a knee to the neck and had the life sucked out of him. And we watched it on TV and countless times on social media. Eight minutes and 46 seconds. Back to the whirlwind. Rising from the intense summer heat was an emotional tension so thick you could cut it, sparking constant breaking news alerts, showing us the boiling point of that tension, the pressure-pushing protests, the cries and chants, Black Lives Matter, Blue Lives Matter, no justice, no peace. Increasingly noisy political pundits, fanning Facebook arguments, the sparkle and crunch of broken glass, the crash and burn of looting, inconvenient street closures in a ghost town downtown, but trucks and tankers on the block and on the ready, bridges up, statues down. Boom, loud firecrackers all day, all night. Is that what those explosions even were? Then there were the corporations pinging your email inbox. Every few emails was a racial equity statement. Ping, great intentions, more often than not, performative in action. Ping, new pledge. Ping, more black people in stock photography, more interracial couples in advertisements. Ping. And there was a very special sound for black women. The cacophony of white guilt checking in. <clears throat> it sounded like this. Hey, Dana, I know you are flooded with DMs from white people, so I'll keep this succinct. Followed by a four-page letter via text, followed up by, this is so-and-so, by the way. And random pics from a protest. Hey, Dana, today was so powerful. Huh? I'm sure it was. Eight minutes and 46 seconds of painfully explicit body camera footage created a ripple effect that caused everyone in this country to become completely aware of how utterly uncomfortable it is to live in a world that doesn't feel just, equitable, and inclusive. In the wave of mostly performative emails from brands, orgs, and corporations, I opened one from my friend's agency. I thought the email was well-written, authentic among so many others that weren't. <laughs> and so I replied with a brief, nicely done. <laughs> well, that opened the door for her. Hey, girl. Mm -hmm. First of all, I'm just checking in on you. Second, and here we go with an ask. She was on a deadline with her publisher and had about a hot 10 days to submit her final manuscript. There was some content she wanted me to read as she thought that in light of the current climate, it may be tone deaf. I'm already ripe with annoyance from the check-in, but I'm even more annoyed because this should be someone's job at that publishing house, right? I told her, frankly, I'm tired of white women checking in on me. I need y'all to go talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> then I pick up the phone and I call my big sister, Michelle, and I tell her how I'm starting to lose my mind and feeling overwhelmed by all of these white women expecting me to carry their emotional labor. The guilty texts, 
and all the money they're suddenly going to donate to whatever cause their so-called progressive friend posted on Facebook in the spirit of self-proclaimed allyship. Michelle calmly told me, well, I'm not tired of it. I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. And just like that, something shifted. I saw myself. The pain and trauma from years of racial bullying growing up in the Chicago burbs. The chip on my shoulder I was carrying. That day, that very moment, created an energetic shift in me. That chip cracked. I went back to that email exchange and I committed myself to helping my friend with her manuscript concerns. And I sure did find some problematic areas. We set up a Zoom to discuss my notes, and she was so genuinely grateful. And I felt so at peace with my decision to put aside my anger. From there on, I made the conscious choice to use my voice. I went back to my friend and I asked her, hey girl, now what can you do for me. How can we use her platform to amplify my voice? She put me on her very popular podcast, and we spent an hour talking about equity and inclusion in the most candid way. We both received so many messages from her followers about how much that conversation moved them. That's what this is about, y'all. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is not some government, corporate, or municipal burden. Creating a more inclusive culture begins with us. Me. You. We. You may be thinking, well, what do you mean, Dana? I'm not a CEO, or I'm not in a position of power. I punch in and punch out. I'm a stay-at-home mom. No. Nope. You are a stone waiting to cause a ripple effect. Your energy alone has an impact. It isn't so hard. This is inside of us. But, 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 I know. We're all afraid to make mistakes, to say or do the wrong thing. I saw a few folks back straighten up when I talked about those overwhelming text check-ins. Inclusivity can look like people of a variety of backgrounds, beliefs, experiences, and opinions allowing each other to be ourselves. And in being ourselves, there may be times when our limitations, unconscious bias, or just plain ignorance might show up. When this happens, this inclusive space is an opening for growth for all. The individuals in the collective feel safe calling someone out on our missteps, me and my author friend, and those who stumble feel empowered by our peer sharing and redirection. Let me frame this all up in a different way. We all like a little structure and direction, right? I'm a creative, so I need lots of structure. I build what I call take action statements. I've created one called the four A's. Assess, access, arrive, advocate. Assess. Take inventory of your blessings, privilege, power. Normalize acknowledging where you have privilege that can positively impact others. I have privilege. Oh, y'all, that ain't just white privilege. There's all kinds of privilege, even pretty privilege. I don't fear public speaking. I use my voice all the time. <laughs> I'm commercially attractive, well-spoken, and socially acceptable. I am a black woman who has the privilege of being heard. What's your advantage in life? In what spaces are you seen and heard? What privilege will you uncover when you take the time to assess? 
I've gotten this down to a daily practice now. In my gratitude journal, I take stock of my gifts and blessings, and I finish by writing down, I deserve this, and there's more where this came from. Every day. It's a perspective shaper. Get used to seeing and giving thanks for your privilege, then don't be stingy. Get used to sharing it. Second A, access. Access the parts of yourself that can benefit from doing more work. Biases you're afraid to admit, fear of speaking up before your peers. Notice what's holding you back from using your power to help others. Let those limiting beliefs go. Think about my moment with my sister, Michelle. Hearing the words, I've been waiting for this moment my whole life, shifted me from clinging to the comfort of my hurts and trauma to allowing my anger to fuel purpose-driven conversations. Who do you want to be? You want to be like the bitter Dana with the chip on her shoulder, anchoring herself down? Or do you want to be the better Dana? that hears that inspiration, the words, I've been waiting for this moment my whole life, and lifts off into her power. Third A, arrive. Show up each day as someone ready to be of service. Decide who you want to be at home, at work, in your community. Then consciously show up as that human being. Even as a stay-at-home parent, you have an advantage. You're up close and personal with the school. That's power. Use that for the good of the community at large, too. Can you see an opportunity to influence activities, recommended reading lists, mystery readers who reflect more diversity? Show up in whatever ways you can, because all of our little ways add up to a big collective change. Final A, advocate. Be the voice, be the decision maker who naturally leaves a legacy of DEI. Make that connection between your power, remember the first A, and how to proactively use your privilege. Stick with it. Consistently arrive. Don't wait to react to a tragic event. Proactive advocacy? Yes. Performative acts? No. Why? Operating in a performative nature builds only transactional relationships and temporary awareness. Let's build a lasting impact. There's that ripple effect. That's what I want to leave you with. The idea that this equity and inclusion game is a personal choice. It's not up to anyone else to decide but you. Show up. Trust me, it's worth it. So, get started with those four A's. Assess, tap into your gifts and write them down. Access, dig in and clean up whatever's holding you back. Arrive, make each day a day of showing up and being intentional about it. Advocate, speak up. Be the change you want to see in your family, community, and world. Raise the awareness of inclusivity and celebrate the little wins. We deserve this, and there's more where this came from. Thank you.